So I went out to lunch. I went out to lunch today, and then I went out to dinner at the exact same restaurant with a different group of people. And at this restaurant, there, there's a menu, and it lists all the different foods they have, and it's very, very specific. So you'll have some restaurants where they'll say something along the lines of like, you know, a uh, sandwich, quesadilla. They don't really put much detail as to what goes into the quesadilla or the burrito or the sandwich or the salad. But this restaurant will list every single ingredient. It's itemized very, very well. And there was somebody sitting at the table next to our table, and the person looks at the waitress and goes, excuse me, can we get the vegan menu? And she goes, uh, we don't really have a vegan menu, but we do have some vegan options here. And if there's something you don't like, uh, that, that, that's there, we can maybe change it a little bit to be what you want. And the waitress is very, very, um, very, very accepting, very, very understanding, and very willing to offer to help them in any way that they can. And after that was done, this same person goes, excuse me, um, do these items really have cheese in them? In that really kind of condescending tone. And I'm sitting there as somebody who is a vegan, and I'm just kind of disappointed. And at one point over the course of the dinner, I looked at the person and said, really? And they got pretty pissy and blah, blah, blah. And the reason I bring this up, the reason I bring this up is because... A lot of people who are vegan, what they, they try to change people. If you ask a lot of people who are vegans for ethical and moral reasons, they want to change the world, they want to change how people eat, they want to change how people think, because they believe that the way they eat and the way they think is more moral. And in some ways, just for the fact that they're not randomly killing shit, eh, it kind of is. But the problem here, the problem here is that if you want to create change and you want people to think like you, be like you, emulate you, the reality of the world is that people are not going to emulate you if they don't respect you. They're not going to emulate you if they think that you're a douchebag. See, nobody wants to be a douchebag. Most people, they don't want to be a douchebag. They don't want to be an asshole. They don't want to be somebody that they don't like. So if they're observing characteristics in somebody else that they don't like, they're probably not going to emulate you. And the reason I bring this up is because when it comes to the whole diet thing, I don't think most people refuse veganism on the idea of the food alone. I could be nuts here, but I, I truly don't believe it's the food. I believe it's the douchebagness. I believe it's the douche factor. When, again, when I see those shirts like people eating tasty animals, I don't actually believe that the people who wear that shirt are doing it because they legitimately enjoy watching cows get, you know, get raped and killed and shit like that. I believe that I believe the people who wear the people eating tasty animal shirt. I don't believe that they they would actually take uh, you know like a little pig, a little piglet that you know, walked up to them and went oink oink and just fucking stab it. I believe people wear those shirts as a, as a pushback against doucheness in vegan culture. I don't think it's about the animals so much so much as it is anti animal as it is anti douche. And it's really important to think about these type of things because again, if you want to change something, whether it's Again, whether it's something like what people eat or it's something like what I do in my business where I want people to realize that what Apple does is, is bullshit and I want people to kind of think about it and I want this right to repair movement to kind of move forward. I want people to realize how ridiculous it is that the only option when a 17 cent fuse or resistor blows is a 750 repair because they don't give out manuals. If I want people to really get that, then I kind of have to present something that people identify with. I have to present... Uh, I have to present an image that people will kind of, I guess, kind of understand. Uh, an image that people are going to identify with. And most people don't identify with this douchebag shit. See, if I am a, see, when I walk into a restaurant, I could be nuts, but when I walk into a restaurant of any kind, where, you know, whether I, it's now as a vegan or before when I was a meat eater, I'm a bit fussy with my food. There are specific types of food that I like and specific types of food that I don't like. So what I do is I look at the menu and I make it my responsibility to do my own research. I make it my responsibility to read every option on the menu. I make it my responsibility to actually know what the names of these food are. So again, like if I don't know, I'm not going to say, excuse me, I demand a vegan menu. I'm going to Google, okay, what the fuck is truffled milky or what's in it? Oh, and then I'll kind of figure out what's in it so that I can make an informed decision as to what I want. When you walk into a restaurant, it's not necessarily their job to change the entire manner in which they make food just for you. It's your job to understand what type of food these restaurants offer so that you can then go to a restaurant that offers the type of food that you want to eat. And I could be kind of insane there, but you know, again, you know, I, like I'm, I'm not gonna walk into a steakhouse and ask for a vegan menu. You, you get what I'm saying? So, 
And, is there, and again, the other thing I want to get into here is that there are so many different ways that you could present yourself. You could present the exact same thought in two different ways. So for example, like the douchey stereotypical vegan way, I could say something like, do you have a vegan menu? I want a special menu for me because I'm a special person. And or you could do something like, is there really cheese in here? In that condescending manner, where again, regardless of whether you're right, wrong, whatever, you gotta understand people are gonna hate you for it. Or you could do what I do and go, excuse me, I I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a pain in the ass. So I see that all these items are listed with cheese, right? Now, these items are listed without it. So I, I, get that you, I get that you're the type of place that's gonna put exactly what's in all these items in the, in the menu. And I appreciate that, you, that, that this is probably accurate. But I'm used to seeing this specific meal delivered with cheese. So I don't mean to be a pain in the ass, I'm sorry for it, but can you just tell me, that, is there cheese in this? And what you're gonna realize is that people are gonna be a lot more open to helping you. They're gonna be a lot more open to giving you, you know, a good experience, bringing your food out before bringing the food out for the douchebag, and overall, maybe even changing the recipe if, if it, it must be changed a little bit for you. When you present yourself with that humble nature, then when you present yourself as, I want a special menu. Do you really have this in there? Because when I hear that, it's like, I, I, for moral, ethical, and health reasons, I don't eat meat, but I swear, I just want to find, I, I want to find a big piece of bacon, and I want to eat it in front of them, just, just because it's such an annoying, annoying fucking mentality. It's an annoying way to get your thought across. And what I would propose is that if you actually want to create change in the world, you should be the type of person that you think other people want to aspire to be, somebody that others can identify with, rather than... Rather than being a douchebag about it, you don't have to be a douchebag about it. You do, if you do really want to create change, you are going to have to get out there, you are going to have to present opinions that people don't agree with, and you are going to have to ruffle some feathers. But you can do that in a manner that is a little bit more effective than the way that most people do it. Again, if you just look at them and say, you look through the menu and you see, all these items are listed with cheese, and then all these items are listed without cheese. Now, if I go to a restaurant and I see cheese on every single, if I see that none of the items in the menu list cheese, even the fucking pizza doesn't say it has cheese, the quesadilla doesn't say it has cheese, then I can come up with the logical assumption that I should assume there's cheese in there, unless it says that there's no cheese in there. However, if these items say cheese, and these items do not say cheese, then I can come to the logical conclusion that this is the type of restaurant that lists all the ingredients. So the ones that don't have cheese, most likely won't have cheese. But if it really bothers me, I can bring it up. Instead of bringing it up in a condescending manner, instead of asking for the special little snowflake menu, I can simply say, I'm sorry to bother you. I see that you're detailed in listing things. I just want to make sure, does this have cheese? Thank you very much. I'm saying again, I'm sorry to be a pain in the ass. If you present yourself that way, it is so much easier to get people to actually understand you. It is so much easier to actually create any type of change in the world. But again, when you act like a fucking douchebag, what you're gonna find is that nobody wants to listen to you, nobody wants to be like you, and nobody is going to help you. And granted, sometimes I've been a douche, again, sometimes I don't listen to my own fucking advice. I know as somebody, for example, like the, the Linus reflowing is BS video. Um, yeah, the, the first one of those that I did was a, was a bullshit video, it really was. I could have presented my point so much better had I waited an hour, but I didn't. So you see what I fucking uploaded. And the reality is that I didn't get my point across well. There were a lot of things that I, I didn't get across well. There were a lot of people that misinterpreted my point. There are a lot of people that are gonna find shit to put in ovens just for the fucking fun of it so they could piss off that douchebag on the internet. And again, I don't blame. I could have presented my point much better. I presented my point that way because I had presented it in a different way, in a nicer way for five years, seven years, and nobody gave a shit. So I, I tried something new for the fuck of it. But it's not something that I'm doing every single day. I really, and again, if I want you to see things a certain way, it's kind of my responsibility to, to come up with a way to get you to, to actually be motivated to listen. Again, it's like one of the ways I can make this relevant to what I do now. See, I'm trying to get, again, I'm trying to get across a point. I'm trying to get across why it is the way that the consumer electronics repair industry right now is screwed up. And, if I, and honestly, if I just uploaded videos saying, hi, Today I'd like to talk for 10 minutes about the right to repair. You know what I would do? I'd probably put you to sleep. Even if I was a respect-worthy person and I wasn't being a douchebag, there's a chance that I, I would put you to sleep. I'd have a channel with 10 subscribers. But what I try to do here is I try to be somebody who is, in some way, shape, or form, relatable to the average human being. Uh, I don't just get up here and, I talk, and talk about my spiel. I talk about, I talk about greed. I talk about friends and family. I talk about solutions-based billing. I talk about uh, depression. I talk about bullying. I talk about uh, 
uh, what makes you a real business. I, you know, I, I talk about all these different aspects of life. I bring you into my life, and then I show you, here are the things that make my life annoying. Here are the things that I find not fair. And then once people have kind of related to that stuff, they don't just see it as me just getting on, um, getting on a podium, or getting on my soapbox, and being self-righteous for 10 or 20 minutes. They see it as, huh, I relate to this person. I understand this person. And you know what? He kind of has a point on that. And I feel like the reason that this channel has gained so many subscribers over the past few years, it's not, it's, it's not because I'm some fucking genius. It's not because I'm doing anything that's special. I'm not a special as a technician. I'm not special as a business person. I'm not special as a human being. I'm a regular person getting a point across, but I'm kind of I'm, I'm making you a part of my world in order to get that point across. And what I find is that it's a very effective way to get one's point across. And it works a lot better than just being, because again, you can speak and be ignored, you can speak and be mocked, or you can speak in a manner where people may actually be encouraged to listen to you. And all I'm encouraging with this video is if you are somebody who is actually a vegan for health or moral or ethical reasons and you want people to change, really think about the dialogue that you use. Because again, even if you're not specifically talking to other people, you may be at a table where other people can hear what it is you're saying. The same way I was at that type of table today, you may be, get, be being heard by other people and you're gonna get that eye roll shit, you're gonna get the, Oh, it's another one of those people. And, and, and again, you're going to make people hate the, what the word means without even hating the diet. Again, I strongly believe, I strongly believe, a lot of the problem with the word, a lot of the issues with it have nothing to do with the actual food. I strongly believe it's not about the food. It has nothing to do with the food. It has to do with the douche factor. People don't want to do something that they feel is going to make them more douchey. So if you are going to represent a certain sect of people and you do want people to, you know, to, uh, to change the, the, the way they live and the way they eat in such a radical way, you're not going to do that by being a judgmental douche. It, it, it's not going to happen. Again, you know, uh, for example, uh, one example here. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, that at least that I know, had this idea that if they change, they change their diet, that, you know, they are going to become less masculine, they are going to become, for the men, that they're going to become weaker, less athletic, and so on and so forth. And, I, again, I know that I'm never going to be some type of beacon of... Uh, you know, of strength. I'm never going to have Triple H's bicep or any, you know, or uh, I'm never, you know, I'm never going to look like, you know, fucking Mark Lobliner or any of these people. That, that's just not, it's not in the, um, it's not, you know, it's not in the genetic script for me. I was, when I was 17 years old at five foot six, I was 103 pounds. And that's after, that's after about six months of a lot of calisthenics. I got into weightlifting. It took years and years just to get to 120 pounds and 130 pounds and 140 pounds. And I grew up very anemic. And that was when I was eating a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables and a lot of everything. I was just, my, my body type is just, a, it just sucks. It's like, a, I would say that I have the body of, um, of a broken air compressor hose like you're at 70 psi when you're putting so much effort into it and you just turn off the motor for five seconds and you're down to like 20 psi like a fucking deflated birthday balloon but what i have noticed is that in the past seven months that i've actually gained 10 percent of my strength at the gym so if i look at every single exercise that i do you know the, the worst one where i've barely gained anything i gained 10 percent over what i was doing before now i don't know what that is could it be the diet? Yes. Could it be that the diet itself allows me to exercise harder because I have more energy, so now I can do a full body exercise four times a week instead of not being able to do that at all? Maybe. Could it just be that I just so happen to have coincidentally started getting stronger after a seven year plateau at this time? Maybe. I have no fucking idea, but the, one of the points is, if I want people to come over to this type of diet, I should set a good example, meaning that I'm if I'm at a restaurant with other people, I'm not going to say, excuse me, is that a dead animal on your plate? Because that, that's going to make people think I'm a douchebag. Uh, am I going to say, excuse me, you, you know, you'd, you'd look like me. You'd be much better off if you ate like me. No, that's, that's going to make me a douche. I'm going to eat what I eat, and I'm going to try to be the best me that I can be. I'm going to try to stay in shape. I'm going to try to you know, keep my body in shape, keep my mind in shape. I'm going to try to keep being the best person that I can be. And if somebody just so happens to say, hey, I sit, in a, I sit in, and I look into a microscope for 12 hours a day, and I'm 250 pounds. You sit and look into a microscope 12 hours a day, and you can run five miles without really feeling terrible. So... 
You know, what's up with that? Then I may just say, well, this is what I do at work. This is my diet. This is what I do at the gym. This is my routine. I'm not going to push it on them. But I, again, it's, it's about being the type of person that people want to be like. And again, nobody's going to want to be like a douchebag. So again, with me, I try to set a good example for whatever it is I'm doing. So for example, again, with tech, everybody has this idea. I remember this being the pre prevalent idea when I was a teenager that, you know, the manly techs, the manly techs are the ones that don't use a fume extractor. The manly techs are the ones that love the smell of flux. Uh, the manly techs are the ones that don't care about exercise. The manly techs are the ones that they, they just fuck all that horse shit. Seriously. Um, that's not the example that I want to set. I want to set the example that, yeah, you can be knowledgeable about RTC circuits. You can be knowledgeable about, uh, you know, about solving quarter fan spin and figuring out uh, why your amplifier sounds single-ended and fixing the bus or the ch crosstalk in the bus modules of the console without being terribly out of shape and without, um, you know, getting this whole macho mentality behind all the wrong things. And so, so again, if I can... If I can do the job that I do, and I can manage to stay in good shape, then isn't that going to kind of want to encourage others to do the same thing? I don't know. I, I'm kind of rambling at this point. But the whole idea is if you want people to be like you, if you want people to adopt your mentality or adopt your philosophy, you have to project to the world the best version of who you are. And you kind of have to think about these things before just, just being a douchebag. So what I would suggest to the people who, re who share the diet type that I have, who share the mentality and philosophy that I have when it comes to what I eat and why I eat it, is just, just think really hard about what you're saying, even in these moments where you don't think other people are listening, where you're at a restaurant, at a table, and you're in within earshot of other people, and you're being a jackass to the waitress, and you're having an attitude with the waitress and shit like this. Because again, all of these things, they really do add up to why people hate the culture, and again, people don't have to hate the culture. And, and it really has something to do with that, you know. Again, like, if I say you should take on this diet, and I go back to being 103 pounds, and I go back to being anemic, and I go back to the point where I try to bench press 115 pounds and the 35-pound plates fall off the side, can I really expect that people are actually going to want to adopt the diet type? If I go back to being a person that runs three blocks and feels tired, can I really expect that people are going to want to mimic my nutrition? If I, if, if I act like a, a, a douchebag in public and, 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 I, and I yell and belittle people over, over my choices, can I really expect that people are going to want to emulate me? And the answer is no. And, I, and it's something that I feel can be applied to many other things but just veganism, but I feel like applying it to veganism just because of the experience I had today. So that's that.